Hey YouTube, J Green 302. It was my intention to only make two videos tonight, but I guess in the course of making those two videos, my mind just kept going. So I thought I'd make a third one. Another gap. Something that is not talked about. So let's go there. Shit hits the fan, WROL. Again, let's define it. The shit has hit the fan. We're not talking about minor, we're talking about major. Things just went nightmare. Everybody talks about how long they can hold up for food, or how long they can do this, or how well they can defend. Let me give you a couple of interesting thoughts here. One, William Forsyth has a book out there called One Second After. He's not that, he, he did a good job, but the constant babbling about his daughter really got on my nerves because my interest was focused somewhere else. But it's a great chronology of how things break down. A couple of things that stuck out in my mind. Within the first 30 days, all type 1 diabetics are dead. No insulin. Pharmacies are going to be a nightmare for people that need medications. Um, the sick, the infirm, the elderly are usually going to be dead in the first 30 days. 30% 30 or 20% of the population will be dead as in corpses and bodies in three months. The death toll will be at 50% of the population at six months. It will be 90% of the population in the first year. Think about that. Now let's sit down and think about this from a prepper point of view. What are items that might be real good to have? Well, let me take you down a thought process here. Get a map, find your house, draw a circle with a compass for three miles. Think about who's there, what the demographics are, and imagine 30 percent of them dead in the in by two months. Well, Shelter is not going to be a problem because there's going to be a lot of empty houses because the occupants will be dead. Crowbars, sledgehammers, lockpicks if you ask me, glass cutters. Means by which to get into a house, you don't want to go sledgehammering a door down. But if you can make a small hole, reach through and, and undo the lock, it's not like a security alarm is going to go off and <laughs> they're damn sure ain't going to be any police. You're going to want to deal with death, decaying bodies, the odor. You might be searching for food. Don't open the fridge. Don't open the freezer. You're you're going to want to salvage from the dead. There's going to be plenty of towels. There's going to be plenty of clothes. There's going to be pr plenty of stuff in the garages. They may have eaten most of the food, but if you're thinking and you know your chemistry and you know certain other things, you never know. You might be able to drink gas out of a gas tank. You, you, you're going to scavenge because there's going to be no stores. Scavenging tools are going to be a lifesaver. Entry into dead people's homes. Gloves. You know, the disposable kind. They're really cheap. If you're dragging a dead body off of something because they, they were wrapped around something, you never know. You need to think down that morbid path. They have cabinets with medications, aspirin, supplies, in the first month to three months, nobody's going to eat 500 aspirin. 
Um, there are a lot of things that can be salvaged. Bikes. Bikes with baskets. Three-wheel carts that tow something. The ability to get around in that three-mile area and salvage stuff. Think about the Amish. They have a horse and a buggy. Look at the way their community works. That's how you're going to be operating. You want to think about your resupply. You want to think about access to those supplies. You want to think about the things that you're going to come across. I look at my neighbors, and my neighbors are the type that they won't last very long. And they have houses full of stuff. These are not, this, this common stuff is not the stuff that I'm too worried about. I can gauge about what they're going to use, and I know what's probably going to be left over. Um, why would I let everybody else loot? Why would I let those supplies walk away? I'm not only going to work on keeping my supply, but I am definitely going to work on keeping it resupplied. So think about those things. Think about dealing with dead bodies. Think about decay. Think about the other thing is be advised that people are not saving food and are not going to be giving food to their pets. Wild, the dogs are going to be running in packs. You're going to have a problem with starving animals and they are pack animals. If you're in a, in a development and everybody's got two dogs and they can't feed them, they're going to put the dogs outside and, and they're just going to say, go away. The dogs are going to get hungry. They're going to get together. They're going to fight. And if they see you, they're going to think about food. And God help you if they smell it. So be very careful and re go back to almost hunting instincts. If you smell like food, you are food. And you don't want to be sitting there trying to deal with 15 or 20 dogs that's a problem scavenging something everybody should be thinking about and not once have I seen anybody talk about it in any video I think you got my point I'll wrap it up there thanks for listening I hope it was thought-provoking talk at you soon have a great one